What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome into the CHGO Bulls Podcast presented to you by our great friends at PointsBet. Don't forget that promo code CHGO when you sign up to live your bet life. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. This is my guy, my friend, my pal, Big Dave. He is at pal, BWL Sports. My other guy, my other pal, my other friend, Will the Thrill, the GOAT, Gottlieb, hanging out in the Magic Bubble down in Brazil. He is at Won't Gottlieb on Twitter. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. We got our friend and producer, Joey, hanging out with us behind the scenes. Shout out to Joey right off the bat for being a big factor in CHGO Softball's playoff win last night. Hooray. Hooray. Huzzah! Everyone loves an underdog story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Bulls fan. We don't do it like that. We just win championships. Bow! So you're so you're saying it's it's less exciting to see an 11 seed win a playoff game than a one seed? Yeah, I mean, I'm just happy y'all won. I'm happy y'all won the game. We, I didn't care what we, you were ranked or seeded. If you win the championship and that's the underdog story, then I think that's hey, the underdog you story. Have not, you have not been to a game and seen what it is like out there. You're right. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is impressive. Right. And I want to I wanna hear, I need the highlights, I need the details. What happened? No, I'm just like everybody else on Twitter. I don't have to do it. I can just criticize it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We were talking about strategy for our next game, the quarterfinals. So there's no games next weekend because it's Labor Day. Mm. So the following Monday after Labor Day is our quarterfinal matchup. Yeah. We were talking strategy in our CHO softball Slack channel after yeah. our win last night. Yeah. And Joey goes, man, is Will back from Brazil by, by then? Because we can really use Will out there in left field. We had a couple of drops in the outfield last night. Mm, mm. Uh, but it's okay because we were piling on the runs. We won 18-8, to eight, and everybody was wow. hitting. Top of the lineup, the bats, middle of the lineup, bottom of the lineup. The, ahead, bats, the bats showed up yesterday. We had a big two-out rally, I think, in like the third inning. Mm-hmm. Put up like six or seven runs. I mean, aggressive base running. Pack was sprinting around. He was flying. He was a blur. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It was a blur. Trent <laughs> Peck's ringer was phenomenal. I, everyone played really Shout well, out, honestly. Trent. Uh, Nick, uh, Nick's buddy, Nick's brother Dan had two homers for us. He was massive. Best game I've seen him play. Yeah. Sean was really good. He's like he hasn't played in a while, but he was good in the outfield for us. Um, he was, uh, we 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 finally got Ryan back for a game. Yeah, Ryan, one of our guys Ryan's from CSU Cubs on the left side of the infield, and and everybody hit for us really like. Alex from uh, the fire show was hitting. He had a couple big ropes. Uh, really, everybody did their job. We, we batted around the order a couple times. And yeah. so it was, it was a team defense, effort. Our defense was definitely sound and, and there's, it could still be improved upon. But if we hit like that, we're going to have a much better chance. Uh, question. What I keep uh, is hearing this- is you guys winning games when I am not there. That's all <laughs> I keep hearing. No, nah, man. We need your diving catches out in left field, man. Come back. I Get an have- earlier flight home before our quarterfinal. They are going to need. Come you, home, you have one of the come best home for next Monday, and then fly back, and then <laughs> Monday after that. Yeah. Uh, was, was this the best game you all have played all year? I think so. Between our bats running up eighteen runs and uh-huh. the defense we played, we had uh-huh. a couple of defensive lapses, but yeah, I think 18. overall, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think probably, for sure, if you consider this was like a solid team that we played that beat us, like we scored one run off them earlier in the right. season. So yeah. the turnaround we had. It was probably, given the circumstances, the best I've seen us play. But I've, I was only there for our first win, not the second. But I was very impressed. Very impressed. Uh, has, uh, can Chris come out there and play? Yeah. Can Chris, yes. can Chris play? Yes. He's definitely eligible. You play softball, Chris? He tried. He, hey, oh, that ain't the answer. No, no, no. no, no that no. is the answer. All you got to do is try. None of That's us it. out there. All you got to do is try. None of us out all right. there are all stars. Well, you're not you're a out, single damn one. Of well, because us. he's tall. He's nice size. He's tall. You know, he looks like he's in solid shape. You know what I mean? He looks like he takes athletic greens. Mm-hmm. So I think he'd be good for y'all, man. I, th- I like. I think he'd be out there. You can do it. That's your move right there. All right. Yeah, he's practicing. All right. Put Chris out there, man. Put Chris out there. Get Sign Chris out there. Get Will back from Brazil. Yeah. We're going all the way to the championship, baby. I hope you do. As an 11 when, seed. When is the championship? Uh, I, so, whatever. The, so, the quarterfinals are the ele- uh, are the 12th. So, then I'm guessing semifinals the weekend after that, uh, or the Monday after that, and then championship the Monday after that. If y'all go to the championship, am I, am I allowed to just show up and play? Yes. In the very first game Absolutely. Of the year, just show up and play in the finals and bring with me at least four ringers. <laughs> yeah. You can be our completely <laughs> out of the blue surprise. <laughs> surprise. I'm still mad because I really had that planned. 
to go July 18th. I still think about that. Is that July one of the rain out days? No, that was when I got sick and came down with COVID. Oh, I couldn't go. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Like, yeah. I really had Shame. that planned because all three of us are going to go. That was the day Will went and showcased yeah. his skills. Like, and, dude, anytime I bring a ringer friend of mine or ringers, plural, uh-huh. they're always like, dude, where's Big Dave? Yeah, man. Because they all man. love you more than they love me, my you friends. I want to see Big Dave. I want to see Big Dave. If there are games at the end of September, though, I could be making an appearance. I'm going to try it, man. That's all I'm we, saying. We got to win our quarterfinals so that Will can get home for the semifinal and the yes. championship. Yes, and more diving catches. Well, well, I'm not trying to get you in trouble, but cancel the trip. Cancel the end of the trip. <laughs> we need you. We Dude, really uh, could use you back. You've been hanging in Brazil with your significant other for Correct. what? Like eight months now? Correct. It's time to we come home. We get it. You like each other. We get it. Time we have, a, we have a chance at history here. True. <laughs> Who do you play next? I'll run it. Odyssey, run after number one we'll, seed. We'll We're playing the undefeated regular season Odyssey. So the same team that, that came and, and whooped on us last time, right? That's correct. Ruled us. I, that was one of the few games I've missed this season, though. I was yeah. not there to help out when we got whooped by the Odyssey. Uh, not saying my presence would have made that much of a difference, if any. And that's not happening next week, obviously, because of Labor Day. Correct. Okay, so Two weeks from now. Two weeks so that means now. I got two weeks instead of one to heal okay. up my quad again. You know what? Now I can go with your underdog story. Because now it sounds like an underdog story time because you, you played the big guy and you got whooped on and destroyed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now you got this group together. You won your game. And you get the extra week. That's right. usually how it happens in the movies. You get two weeks right. and not the very next week. So it's, it's, I feel you It's now. like we get another shot at playing Iceland in Mighty right. Ducks 2. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Odyssey is Iceland. And a very prominent member of the Odyssey team was, was throwing some shade at the CHGO Cubs account for reposting uh, Pat Hughes video a couple weeks ago and i'm just gonna say it's some bulletin board material for the chgo softball team bulletin board we are gonna come out ready to go okay i hear y'all all All right Uh, i like how you just kept that anonymous (laughs) odyssey Odyssey is odyssey is too good to be talking shit to teams that aren't very good that's my stance on it good they should be talking well yeah considering that that for large large numbers of their games this season the guy batting in their three spot in their lineup, former Major League Baseball yeah, player. You talk shit. Yes, that's, that's what you do. You talk crap. Uh, uh, Trevor, have uh, you know you know what's funny? Trevor literally was listening to it on my way here. What is the forever story? The forever story is by an artist named uh, J.I.D. or Jid. Uh, he's from Atlanta. He's really, 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 really excellent. Like, really kind of elite. I, I consider him elite among the young guys today. He's, mm. one, he's one of the elite ones today. What do you what do you have him, uh, Joey? You're a young guy. What do you? Have? I like him. I'm, I was never. A, I'm not a huge fan, as as I think a lot of other people are. But and for how much I like a lot of the Dreamville roster, mm. I don't think Matt would like it very much. I don't either. But I do. I, I haven't listened to the new album, but everything I've well, heard said it was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah I've super, heard it's phenomenal. Super bright and super skilled and super intelligent. Very smart. No, and Matt actually might like him because Matt is a big fan of Lupe. That's so true. He might, do he love me some into, Lupe. Yeah, he might get into J.I.D. Man. But J. I'm J. sure you're MC. all very surprised to know that I've never heard of the, whoever this I, is I'm, that you're talking Matt, about. You see, I didn't even address that <laughs> at, at all. No, I didn't waste your time at all. Have you heard of J. Cole? Yeah. yeah kind of, yeah. sort of. Okay. He's on J. Cole's yeah. label. Sounds familiar. Yeah, he's on his label. That, okay. He's on his That's roster. different than the clothing line? <laughs> it's very different from the clothing line. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> All right, guys. We, oh, we hold on real quick. Yeah. Good question here from Cameron. Yeah. Uh, joining a little bit late, weren't you guys supposed to have a guest on today? Mm. We were. That guest is going to be rescheduled. It was mm-hmm. going to be a remote interview today. Mm-hmm. It is now going to be an in-studio mm. guest on <laughs> Thursday. Turn up! Very excited to have her in studio. Yes. Uh, if you are a longtime Chicago sports fan, you know who this person is. Yes, and you um, will be happy. And you will be happy. I am thrilled that she's going to join us in studio now. I am ecstatic that, that she's going to join us in studio and can't wait to talk. So stay tuned for Thursday. Yeah. Uh, okay, but so today we got a few things we're going to cover. Big news in the NBA over the last 24 hours. R.J. Barrett, new contract with the Knicks. What does that mean about Donovan Mitchell? <laughs> Also, uh, some silly NBA uh, Twitter account that Dave found was ranking NBA general managers and NBA front offices, so we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to round out today playing a new game that uh, our guy Joey came up with. Joey! It sounds like a lot of fun. I can't wait to give it a try for the first time called Quotable. Uh, I love anything that is something a bull. This is the first one that Joey has just totally come up with on his own for us right here, and that's why I'm super excited about it. 
So I'm excited to see what he, because he's controlling everything on this. You know, he got the questions, he got the answers. He's the one bringing it all down and the graphics. This is all a Joey I, Spathis production. I right would here. love it if Joey just became the entire brains behind this operation. Oh, so the, it free so up so the much. Yumi and Will just don't have to do anything. Just oh, give it. A, just give it a few wait, months, Matt. Just me. give it a few. That months. is already the case. We don't do anything, <laughs> and Joey is pulling all the strings. Let's not get it twisted. No, that's e- you're not here, Will. That's easy to say. You're not here. You're not here. When you're here, you'll, you'll that's understand. My, that's exactly my point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So let's talk about R.J. Barrett for a minute here. Uh, Joey, can you throw up that uh, Woj bomb? There it is. New York Knicks guard R.J. Barrett finalizing a four-year rookie Knicks. extension that could be worth up to $120 million, his agent told uh, ESPN complicating the franchise's off-season pursuit of Utah Jazz All-Star Donovan Mitchell. Here's a couple of awesome follow-up tweets from Woj about this. Leon Rose set a Monday night deadline with Utah to reach an agreement on a trade for Mitchell, or the Knicks would commit to the Barrett extension. Knicks and Jazz closed the gap on deal points in recent days on a Mitchell trade, but neither would go further. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe my favorite part of all of this, Barrett's extension ends a remarkable 23-year drought for the Knicks. Jesus. The franchise's first draft pick to agree to a multi-year contract extension after his rookie deal since Charlie Ward in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry, that threw That's me off right there. Incredible. Was yeah. not ready for that. Incredible was not ready for that. Charlie Ward. It's, a, it's always great perspective when you go back to the Knicks' failure to to draft and develop and re-sign talent, especially all of the years they've been in the lottery for the fact that they've just been garbage for the last two decades. <laughs> Whenever you think about the Bulls' front office of old and hits and misses, yeah. they had plenty of hits yeah. in addition to their misses. The Knicks, just all misses. You know what's why, what? I don't know if people, younger people out there, don't know who Charlie Ward is, but Charlie Ward was actually a quarterback at Florida State who won the Heisman Trophy, and he was elite, and he did not get drafted in the NFL. We ain't gonna get into why, but I think you know why. But he was also excellent at basketball, like truly, truly a great point guard, and he was drafted by the Knicks as their point guard. And lasted for a nice long time, you know what I'm saying, in the league, man. So the fact it's been that long for a dude whose first sport was football to be the first, the only last dude that actually re-signed with them just says a lot about what has been going on in that organization for that many years, man. That's, that's truly wild to me. It's wild. And I think I want to bring it back to what we talked about last week with the Knicks and it's I don't think this is over. I know it's going to be way more complicated for them to get Donovan and RJ Barrett. If it happens this year is like almost certainly not going to be a part of that deal. To me, basically, this move is saying like you're just kind of like signing your death warrant or whatever, where now you're just saying I have to give up all the picks because like RJ Barrett was the one player. I mean, maybe quickly, maybe Obi Toppin, maybe Quentin Grimes, guys like that could be of interest to the jazz and maybe even more so since they're like way cheaper, way younger, but like RJ Barrett was the one sort of closest thing to a blue chip prospect. Obviously that's off the table now. So basically you're saying, yeah, if we want to get this done, we're going to have to give up six, seven, eight picks. And Danny and just probably licking his chops. Yeah. Yes. Well, and, and that yes. was included in Woj's more detailed report on ESPN.com, which was that the reason Barrett waited And the Knicks waited until now to get this extension done is because he was involved in several, if not most, of those trade proposals going back and forth to Utah about Donovan Mitchell. So it sounds like that at least Utah was somewhat interested in Barrett and were interested in hearing trade proposals that included him. But now the question becomes, okay, you couldn't get a deal done that involved R.J. Barrett. Is there still any path? with all of the draft capital that the Knicks do have that were always the crux of these talks. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about Barrett or other young players, Toppin, whoever. It was always about, oh, well, the Knicks could send them as many as eight draft picks. Mm -hmm. Do they still do that and find a way around it? Or is there now a new team that comes in as the front runner to win the Donovan Mitchell trade and steal him away from the Knicks because – it seems to me like the Jazz still have an intention of trading Donovan Mitchell, sure. following the Gobert trade, breaking everything down, and starting over. That's true. I, I think it's a new team, honestly. 
Uh, because with the Knicks, I think also the the point that or the good thing that they that would have been included with this if RJ Barrett was included was the Knicks were going to continue to be trash. And if you keep RJ Barrett and you get Donovan Mitchell, you send them all them picks. That's not a trash team anymore. I'm not saying they're, they're a you know a top six seed or anything like that. But with Tibbs as your coach, you know, and and we know how good he is, and with those kind of stars on your basketball team. You're not trash. You're going to be competing, and that's going to hurt your draft, you know what I'm saying, stock and things like that. So I think Danny Ainge might have been looking at that point and saying, well, if, even if they give us eight, what are they really worth if we give this up and they're a good basketball team uh, going forward and, and in the future? So now I think it's just about another team that might be coming in here. Now it's about getting the best of what he can get now, whether that's an actual player or yeah. whether that's a team whose draft stock is really, really high, Will. Will, where do you think Ainge is going to look now if he is not still looking at the Knicks and all of those draft picks? I think he is still looking at the Knicks. I mean, they've still got the most draft picks. They still seem the most desperate to try to be good, and they still seem the most desperate to try to go get a guy uh, in a trade who like has roots in New York. So I think they're still probably the front runner. It just becomes more complicated or maybe for Danny Ainge, it becomes less complicated because now it's not a debate of what shitty players he has to take back. He just gets his picks. So I still don't think that there are very many other teams who are willing to trade very much for Donovan. I mean, you could think of teams like the Heat. Um, maybe the Suns would like turn to him. I think that'd be a pretty weird fit with Booker and Chris Paul, but just since they didn't get KD, maybe they still want to add a guy. Um, I've heard the Hornets before, like, None of these teams really make sense or strike me as teams that would be willing to to mortgage their future, you know, trying to match as many picks as the Knicks could offer. So I still do kind of think it's a Knicks. And that's where, you know, this whole thing about it complicating the deal, but not taking it completely off the table. I think that's where I'm kind of at right now. Will, another team that I heard come up was the Los Angeles Lakers in this. Do you think that they have any shot at this, maybe a three team trade or anything with that? I think they're going to be involved. I can't remember who tweeted if it was Woj or Shams, but I think they'll have involvement, but I think they're going to end up sending their 27 and 29 first round picks and Russell Westbrook to the Jazz. The Jazz will obviously buy out Russ and then get back, whether it's, you know, as a part of a Indiana three-team deal or, you know, maybe it's just straight up with the Jazz. They get Mike Conley and Boyan Bogdanovich or... Um, you know, any of those forwards that are making a decent amount of money for the Jazz. I think that's, you know, that has some possibilities there. I could also see like the Knicks just saying, all right, we'll give you the eight picks, but like you also got to take back Julius Randle, who we clearly don't want and who's starting a four year contract right now. He's going to like have to be stuck on your books. Maybe the Jazz would do that. I don't know. It's, it's all very complicated. I don't think there's like, you know, a lot of times we just hear about these perfect trades that are out there, like Russ and two picks for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. That makes so much sense to everybody. And so that that's almost like why it's a rumor. I don't really think that's the case now with the uh, with the Jazz, but I also don't know how much the Jazz ever wanted R.J. Barrett as a part of this. I think the picks are what they're after, and that's what they're going to get. That's the other interesting wrinkle about this to me, uh, and not necessarily the Mitchell side of it, but the Knicks side of it with this extension for Barrett is – Coming into this past season, if you were to say, all right, the Knicks are only interested in really long-term building around one of Randall or Barrett, and maybe not necessarily both, Randall was coming off of like an all-NBA caliber season in, in the 2021 season and seemed to be looking more and more like the guy yeah. in New York. And Barrett was, you know, a former top five overall pick who looks like a good player, not a great player. Right. And now, as you just said, Will, those tables seem to have flipped. And now now the Knicks might be saying, all right, well, is there some way that we can still get Donovan Mitchell? We've committed to Barrett, but now we're ready to move on from Randall. I mean, it, it's haywire, but I guess it's haywire because the, the Knicks have gone through some front office overhaul over the last couple of years. Yeah, and even the guys well, that you mentioned, uh, I don't think are long for Utah. Like, like – as you just said, Will, as soon as you said Russell Westbrook, I said, oh, he's not staying. And then you were like, yeah, he's going to get bought out. And him, him mentioning Julius Randle, my first thought was like, he's not playing there. And I'm like, they're going to find a way to buy him out. So even with that, the players that might be included in this, it just seems like a money situation more than a player situation that comes with it. 
And that's the complication with Randall is that he's got four more years on his contract. So he's not getting bought out. He could get flipped again or packaged as part of another deal. But to your point, Matt, he went from having a 24, 10 and six season shooting 45 and a half from the field and 41% on threes to then pulling a Vooch and dropping down to 20 points and 30% on threes. So like you can understand <laughs> it's true. He went from 40 to 30. Oh, this was... He went from, That's I'm an not accurate way to describe it. I know. I know. It, I didn't say it wasn't accurate. I just said it, was <laughs> it was, it was an unnecessary stray, but it was true. It was. <laughs> um, but like, you can understand why the, the Knicks fans would be frustrated. Now I think they've gone way too far the way that the Bulls fans have gone way too far against Vooch. But when you have a 26 year old who makes an all NBA team and then he takes a significant step back the next year and your team misses the playoffs. Like I can see why you get pissed about it and want him out of town. That's also why the Knicks haven't had a guy stay with their team since 1999. So they just run everybody out of town. I don't really feel bad for them, obviously, but I do think, you know, they're probably selling low on Randall. If they do trade him at the same time, you bring in uh, Brunson. If you get Donovan Mitchell alongside RJ Barrett, that's a lot of mouths to feed. That's a lot of guys who need the ball in their hands. As we talk about all the time, in order to to be the lead guy, to have that role with the ball in your hands at all times, you need to be so freaking good for that to work. And I don't see any of those guys as being that good. Donovan, I think, is the closest thing. But like a timeshare between Randall, Barrett, and Brunson is kind of a kind of a mess, if you ask me. Wasn't Randall beefing with like New York fans for a while? Yeah, like having actual I think issues so. with them, you know. Right. So yeah, so because they they were throwing booze down yeah. at some point during some game about something, yeah. and maybe related to his performance in particular, and he was like, "Man, Throwing you know, some fingers up, talking some mess to him." So, right. Yeah, he didn't endear himself to the New York uh, fans either. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's it's I'm, a mess, as as Will said. Yes, I think I think you mentioned them once, Will. Before we move on, I'm just gonna say it: if it's not the Knicks still for Donovan Mitchell, and the Jazz are determined to move him. The team and the person that I am afraid of lurking out there Uh is Miami and Riley. That's it. He will, if he wants Mitchell to somehow pair Mitchell with Jimmy and Bam, Mm -hmm. he will find a way to get that done. That's vicious. If that happens, vicious. And I don't like it. I don't even like thinking about it. Yeah, that's why I haven't thought about it. What are they? What do they have to offer though? Like their team. It doesn't matter. Riley (laughs) will offer them. Good. You know, Magic beans. Right. <laughs> like, Stock options. What, what's the uh, what's saying? Options. You know, you it, it, Riley could sell a, a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. Like, <laughs> Water to can, a whale, baby. He can make it happen. Yes, He man. can make it happen. Right. He can do we'll stuff. See. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. All right. Uh, next on deck, we're going to talk about where the Bulls front office might rank uh, along with their colleagues across the NBA. Uh, we'll talk about that coming up next in just a minute. But first, today's episode brought to you guys by PointsBet. Mm-hmm. PointsBet sp- Sportsbook is counting down the days until the football season with a new offer every day until the season kicks off. From now until September 8th, that's a week from Thursday. A week from Thursday. One week. PointsBet Power Hour will unlock a new daily offer from noon to 1 p.m. Power. Central Time. Sign up for PointsBet now using wow. that promo code CHGO you heard him. to also get those two risk free bets up to $2,000. Don't miss out on your chance to get daily access to free bets, boosted odds, and so much more now through September 8th. But that's not all. If you make a $51 or more first time deposit, you'll receive a free membership to CHGO, mm. which unlocks all of our great web content from all of our credentialed reporters here at CHGO, including our guy Will here. You'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker, which, by the way, right now, simultaneous to us, CHGO Bears is going on. Boom. Not only are they talking about the official 53-man roster. What else are they doing? They're dropping a brand new bear shirt pow. in the CHGO locker. Pow, pow. It's dropping today. Pow, pow. So after you're watching us, go rewatch, do a rewatch on the CHGO Bear Show, and check out that new CHGO Bear shirt available in the locker. Why not? Think Download that points bet app today and mm. use code CHGO mm. to take advantage of this limited time offer. Mm-hmm. Because once the game starts, will the thrill? The people shouldn't just bet. The people should do. Live what? your bet life. 
Look at that shirt right there, by the way. Ooh. Hey, can you put it underneath Will's uh, chin right there? Make it look like he's wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> see how he's modeling for that, Joey? You see that? How he's got that ready. He just, he just put that. That's a nice shirt. There you go. Ooh. Yes. Oh, look yeah. at that. Now that's fashion. <laughs> And now he's sitting in my lap. That's right. <laughs> That's fashion, man. <laughs> uh, Okie dokie, guys. So it's a nice shirt. We're going to talk Bulls front office right now. We've been doing a lot of ranking stuff over the offseason because that's kind of one of the big things that people talk about in the NBA offseason once free agency has calmed down. It is. Front office rankings are not one you hear about too often. No, no. Don't get talked about too often. No, no. But Big Dave, you were perusing Twitter the other day and Peruse, came across yes. this Twitter account called Play Swoops, Swoops, which is, I guess, a primarily fantasy basketball related Twitter account. Yes. And they posted this graphic. Joey, do we have this? This is via Swoops on Twitter. An NBA GM slash basketball operations hierarchy pyramid with tiers of best in the business, genius, elite, want them as my GM, mm -hmm. and very competent. Mm -hmm. So these are all the top 15 uh -huh. teams of the league as far as executives go. Right. If you look through the pictures of all of those people uh -huh. in that pyramid, uh -huh. nowhere in there will you see Arturis or Mark Eversley. Not one place would you see them. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Uh, so from our CHO Bulls account, you just quote tweeted it, and you were like, oh, Acme not in the top 15? Okay. It's, actually, uh, that was yep. me. But yeah, so about oh, that was you. The, will? The, that. Yes. I only get credit for the bad tweets, so I, I won't take that. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn, Will! I was about to tell him I didn't do it. Will, so I got it. Dave. I, don't, I don't know. It just <laughs> had like this simplicity saltiness that sounded like Big Dave to me. No, but. no, 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 no. It was all Will. That's like all I was gonna said, say. I'm like this get, was. I'm trying to get takey at the CHGO Bulls. Account, <laughs> so follow, follow for more. Brazil has changed him. <laughs> He's seen things. You see, it's basically it. it's basically tweeting from behind an egg, so I can say what I want. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But after I, I saw, I, I immediately sent it to um, Matt and and John in, in our uh, chat in our group chat, mm -hmm. and, and and hilarity ensued uh, after that. First of all, when I saw Toronto on top, I immediately said this list is trash. So because if no you got, love for Masai, I have love for Masai, but if you have Golden State <laughs> underneath that. I, I'm sorry, I'm done. I can't. You know what I mean? Like you make all the moves you want. For it's Golden State, all right? You how are they not number one? Like seriously, the moves they made, the things they've done. Did they not get Kevin Durant or, or not? Did I miss that? Okay, no, this it's bad. I don't I don't like that. I think that's ridiculous. Then the next one for me was OKC right next to them, which was also crazy to me. I, I can't. Well, LeBron has can't loved what that. they've been doing for years oh, now and sure talks he has. about it often. Sure, he has. Some, he got to get his 30 against somebody. <laughs> <laughs> sure, he loves what they're doing. They got a lot of picks and they've done that. But as my man John pointed out, it's like, wasn't that, wasn't that the team that, that traded James Harden for Kevin Martin? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. They, they did kind of do that. Weren't they the team with three MVPs? And then all of them, like, we out. Like, yeah, that, that kind of did happen right there. Um, it's, they, they've had a bunch of talent, and they've got a lot of picks, but it hasn't equated to winning. So I can't commend them on what might happen in the future. You know what I'm saying? Like, what might happen in the future? All those picks might turn out. It might be great. Or you might turn out and get it like Philly. You know what I'm saying? Just end up with Joel Embiid, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? And you, Markel Foles don't work out. Ben Simmons don't work out. You know what I mean? And you just walk away with Embiid, which is a nice prize, you know what I'm saying, to get. But that was a lot of picks just to have that. So I didn't like that. Um, the Miami and Philly I, I thought was great. How Utah is up here already, and they really just, like, Gobert was, like, the only thing. And then I'm like, the next line is Minnesota, who they traded them to. I was confused about that as well. Like, like that kind of threw me. So, And then the bottom one really just threw me because it's like Cleveland, Orlando, Detroit. How are Orlando and Detroit <laughs> in the top 15 of NBA executives? I'm like, bro, like. like trash what? now, but trash for a while. <laughs> what? You get, wins have to matter at some point in time on these kind of lists. You can't just say, hey, I like the moves you've made. Dividends have to be paid before you can put somebody on a list of something like this. So I have I believe in the in the you've got to see it to believe it kind of philosophy when it comes to GMs, which is why Pat Riley can be up here, why Golden State can be up here. The fact Toronto that Riley's only on the third tier again. Yeah, again, that's crazy to me. As but, a hater of Riley, but someone who fears him rationally, yeah. he should be at the top of this pyramid. Now the Spurs, I get you've seen it. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like Memphis, I get you saw it. You know what I mean? Boston, you saw it and you saw what they did in this offseason. Like, okay, I saw it. They they've had success. But success has to come with this. You can't just say, hey, I like that. That's nice. You're one of the best in the league now. That's not how that works, man. The Bulls have been disrespected on this one, I think. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay, so <laughs> let me uh, let me first start by saying the way I first thought about this was not like full body of work, which is, I think, probably the way that you should look at it. So I think you're right about a lot of these things. But my first reaction was like, yeah, Bob Myers should be at the top with Masai Ujiri. I think they're like pretty pretty much one and two. I'm not sure what order, but like those those are the guys. Um, both in terms of body of work, but also like what you're doing presently. Um, I love uh, Sam Presti. I think obviously like they're in tanking mode now, but if you think about it, they've only been bad for two years. They traded Paul George for Shea Gildas Alexander and like six million picks. They um, flipped Russ for Chris Paul and then had that playoff run. Uh, they, they've just like won in so many different ways. And now they're going to have a super quick rebuild. I think he is definitely up there, but certainly if you like knock him for, you know, this current rebuild, they're, they're not winning games. So I can understand that. Um, I think I'm trying to look at who else is on there. Like Maury, Ainge, Pat Riley get like the lifetime achievement award. I'm fine with where they are, where they are. Where they are. Same with RC Buford should probably be in that group. Um, I love what Brad Stevens has done, right? Like he, um, didn't break it up when they could have. They brought back Al Horford. They got rid of Kemba Walker. They brought in Malcolm Brogdon. They made a finals. They've been doing really well. Uh, Tim Conley, you know, I I think they overpaid for Gobert, but as as you all know, like I love the big swing, so I, I don't really fault him. And then the um, climbing in Memphis has done a really good job building through the draft and all the stuff that they've done. The bottom tier, I wasn't crazy about like Colby Altman, I think has been okay. Um, really did not like the Karis Levert trade, did not like the way they've drafted the past couple of years. Um, obviously with, with the exception of Mobley and Garland, um, I guess they also had the trade that brought them in Jared Allen. So they've done some good stuff, but I, I think competent is about right. Orlando, that's a weird one to me. I don't really feel like they've done anything except for like the Vooch trade and They've been kind of bad other than that. So I don't really love that. Detroit, they have made some good moves, but made just as many bad moves. Like, why are you re-signing Marvin Bagley? Why are you getting Nerlens Noel and Alec Burks in there if you're trying to rebuild? Um, so just some weird stuff. And then obviously James Jones has like put together the winner, but there's like all this other stuff going on in their front office. So he's kind of like middle to pack me. And Travis Schlank, I think he's had some big swings and big hits and also some big misses. I think AK should be in that group for sure. Obviously this is 15 and you have to like take somebody out, but I think there are a couple AK should be around, you know, the 15 to 12 range in my opinion. And that's really good. I mean, they've had some big swings and big hits. They've also missed on a few things and haven't really been able to build on the margins as well as you'd hope. Um, but I really like the process that they've done, which is build around Zach Levine, make sure you pay him, bring in a big wing, uh, facilitator and scorer to play off of him and like mask maximize him and make sure that he doesn't have to be the one making late games decisions and things like that. Go out and get a big uh, post presence who can be a facilitator and then get defender shooters and put them around there. They haven't like hit a home run on that, but like Alonzo and Caruso pretty close to as good as you can get. It's just like the eighth, ninth, 10th. So I think AK should be on there. I'm not like horribly offended by it. I think the magic one is a little weird. I think Detroit's a little weird. I think they're better than Cleveland and probably Atlanta too. I think they're definitely in that hierarchy somewhere, but I don't think they're like top three, top five. No, 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 that's a lot. Uh, no, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, um, b before we continue on talking about AK and Eversley, <laughs> a, a good point in the comments from Mark saying, does Milwaukee deserve to be up there? And Daddy Fish saying, yeah, they want a chip. John Horace, the GM in Milwaukee, probably should get more credit and I be agree. on this pyramid somewhere yeah. when you think about the fact that they've convinced Giannis to stay in a yeah. very small market yeah. and put around him the talent to win. Yeah. Like, you know, Middleton came up along with Giannis. Correct. Middleton was back in Milwaukee like 2013 or whatever. Yeah. But they they swung big on Drew Holiday they coming did. in to be that big third piece. They did. And it worked. They and got, they won a chip. 
like not only Drew Holiday, but the complimentary pieces and role players that they brought in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, John Horst should be on this list too. Yeah, and got Eric Bledsoe out of there during that time frame at the same time. So, yeah, he should definitely be on that list. Again, winning matters. <laughs> like, uh, that really, really, really matters to me. Um, in the short term or long term, however you want to look at it, it matters. What right. they might do, what they could do, yeah, that's fine. But you should not punish the Bulls, you know what I'm saying, for a team that's a maybe when the Bulls are actually tangible and you can actually see it. Yeah, and, and like the the – timeline as kind of you were talking about will is this a career body of work ranking system or is this a right here and right now system ak and eversley have been on the job now for about two and a half years right not even two and a half they were hired mid-pandemic after the league had shut down but before we knew that the bubble thing was going to happen it was april of 2020 yes give or take yeah that's not even two and a half years and you said will primarily what they've done is build around zach levine before they did that you know what they had to do? They had to evaluate what they had and then basically completely overhaul a roster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two and a half years ago, for real two and a half years ago, at the All-Star break in Chicago, the Bulls were the laughing stock of the NBA. Literally. Chicago was the host city of All-Star weekend, and every other joke yes. was made at the Bulls' expense. It was. We are coming off of a one-and-done playoff appearance, but they were a top six seed, avoided the play-in, mm -hmm. And made the playoffs for the first time in five years. First when he worked in like seven. So, yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute since that, man. But. That's, you know, as you're saying, Dave, it's, a, a, you know, winning matters. If you're judging front offices, winning, winning, winning. Championships in particular. Sure. They started not from the starting line. Mm. They started from like three miles down the road yeah. away from the arena to get to the starting line. Yeah. And what they've done in these two years and change, I think, is impressive. I agree with Will. They've had some some swings that didn't sure. necessarily hit no or question. haven't hit yet. No question. Whether you want to talk about overpaying for Vooch, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's saying anymore that they overpaid for DeMar yeah. with, you know, sending that draft pick to, to San Antonio or even sending Thad to San Antonio yeah. based on what we got out of DeMar last year. The two that people might be hitting them for right now, overpaying for Vooch, and the Pat Williams non-believers mm -hmm. who have seen 1.2 seasons out of him and said, kid's a bust. <laughs> 1.2, yeah. Dang, I didn't even put it like that. You're absolutely right. And maybe some people also, like my guy Dave here, who said, shouldn't have traded away Daniel Gafford. Well, no, I didn't say that, actually. I wasn't mad about trading away Daniel that, Gafford. Actually, you're I never right. said that. I never said that. But they other members away. of your Daniel yeah. Gafford fan club, no, of they, which you were and yeah. maybe are the president. President, CEO, and founder of, <laughs> yes, no question about it. But I, but I repeatedly said he had to leave to grow and to get better because it wasn't going to happen here, clearly. So I had no problem with, you know what I'm saying, him, him leaving. I didn't want him to, but I had no issue with it people you know we're trying to put that true. on me but i, I wasn't that's like that. true about that's true about like a lot of the bulls young guys who they've released or traded over the past couple of years whether it's lowry or wendell or maybe it's kobe yeah. next year um i will say i think the bulls front office gets a lot of credit for like doing what they did with what they had meaning like look where they started kind of what you're saying matt but like I don't know. I just, I don't know how much like extra credit I want to give them for having a, like they had all their future draft picks that had a couple of young core pieces. They could have decided to go a couple of different directions. It wasn't like they stepped into a situation where they were out a bunch of draft picks. Like let's say Rob Polinka gets fired and LeBron uh, doesn't extend and leaves. Like they will have nothing. All their draft picks are gone. They have no real players. That would be a situation where like, if you could turn it around, it would be super impressive. I think it was like a pretty average starting spot. Obviously, like the Bulls were really bad and they were on the wrong side of even being mediocre. But I'm just not sure how much like extra credit I'm willing to give the front office for basically like having done their job, you know? I'm not saying extra credit, just credit. Yeah, they're yeah. not getting and that's credit. credit. That's credit. Yeah. For I'm not I'm not criticizing what you said. I just I feel like I hear that a lot and um yeah, I mean, I think they've done a good job, and that's part of doing it is, like, playing the hand that you've been dealt. And, and I mean, it covers the giant spectrum of what NBA front offices are asked to do depending on what the state of the team is when they take the job. If you come in or get a promotion from GM to VP or get promoted from assistant GM to GM 
and your team is on the precipice of championship contention, then you're critiqued and judged by the fringe moves you make or the one final big swing move you make, whether or not it gets you over the top yeah. and across the finish line. The Bulls' new front office of AK and Eversley came in not at all in those circumstances. So what what do you judge them by? Yeah. What progress is made from taking over totally. a franchise that is being laughed at and is absolute trash <laughs> to back to respectability and the moves you make to go from that step to that step? Yeah. It's completely different criteria, but you got to judge the front offices somehow. 100%. Yeah, and that's exactly what they've done is they've gone from bad to good. And I think the next step is obviously going from good to great, and we'll see if they can do that. Joey, uh, did you hear ever hear the word precipice? Yeah. You've got that. Okay, just checking. Come on. That's no Don't, come, don't get cocky now. Don't do, don't do that. <laughs> don't give him some credit, Dave. I'm just checking. Why can't I check in with my guy over here to make sure he's You good? can. That's you can. Right. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. He's Joey sure. is educated. I know he's he is. a well educated young a man. Very educated. There are just man. some old timey words and phrases like that we precipice, use. which is why I asked him if making sure he was on okay. par with us. That's it. You guys are the talkers, like you're the English majors. And Peck is the Shakespeare guy. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, my expertise is the computer stuff. So Yes. You know. And you do a wonderful, wonderful thank job. Thank you. Sir. But you know, everybody play your role. Play your role. <laughs> no, your do role. your job. Do your job. <laughs> uh, Dante is saying role, they, aka Acme, also have to be better with their player development plan, and, and I th that's I think another area where there will be a lot of critiquing the front office with how much better does their former number four overall pick Patrick Williams get mm -hmm. under their tutelage and direction? How much better does Io get? Mm -hmm. What kind of development will we see out of Dalen Terry, the rookie this year? It's something that they clearly weren't succeeding, not, not they, Acme, but the Bulls not succeeding at with Chris Dunn, Lowry Marketing, Wendell Carter Jr. Mm. That trio of players all dealt with injuries. Yeah. So some of that maybe is bad luck. But when you think about all of these teams in the, in the league now that have drafted and developed young talent that have been vital look at the warriors celtics finals just earlier this summer and all of the home drafted talent that played key roles in winning those games in the finals true indeed and and even the guys you mentioned those are some elite drafts yeah also that they came from and so that the fact that they couldn't develop here and they were drafted you know that high you know within the top 10 is also a glaring mark you know what i'm saying on uh, their time here. Now, again, I'm glad they went on and developed. I'm glad Wendell figured out he's blind. I'm glad Lowry, you know, is comfortable in Cleveland. I'm, I'm glad Daniel Gafford is doing his thing in Washington. Uh, I'm glad all of that is happening uh, for these younger guys. But at the time they were, when they were here, it just, it, it didn't work out. And honestly, what's funny is from the way things are kind of being judged on this list, Garpex might have been on this list just in that kind of thinking. Hear me out. When you're looking at when let me out. When you're looking at Lowry, I want to hear you. I want to keep making this stank face though. No, and this is why I'm telling you the list is stupid. This, okay. this is the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> <laughs> this is one point I'm trying to make about it. When you look at what they're having, Lowry, Wendell, Kobe, and Zach Levine, having those guys on your team as your core at that point in time, when after that first year, Lowry Marketing was supposed to be that guy, right? Wendell Carter Jr. was severely highly rated. Like, yo, this dude is going to be nice. Zach Levine was considered a nice, very nice pick, a fringe all-star kind of guy making that move. And then you're getting Kobe White with that on top of that. Dra having that kind of draft core, at that time, it looked like a really nice core. And that might have landed the Bulls on this kind of list like they're doing Detroit, like they're doing these other teams that are making good draft picks at the time. What they turn out to be, we don't know. But that's why I'm saying winning matters and stuff that's tangible matters because you don't know what it's going to turn out to be. I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that. I'm not sure people, like, perception league-wide was that that young core was going to amount to much of anything. I didn't I tell don't think, I don't think any. I don't think <laughs> any of those lie, players sir. were widely believed by most people mm -hmm. to be star on the rise. When, you talk, when you're talking about Lowry, Zach, Kobe. Lowry, Zach were definitely considered to be stars on the rise. That's a true. That's not a lie. 
maybe by some people in Chicago. No, I, no. I, I would I would argue that most people Do you remember across those the lists? NBA. You remember those lists that were coming out at that point, having Lowry's really kind of highly rated at his position at that point in time. He was considered like, you know what, this dude might be that guy. He was looked at that as that after that Briefly. first year. Right, okay. Yeah. That's all I'm okay. talking about. Yeah. After that first year, that's all I'm talking about. As it went on, he no. Had that, he had that one month of March, baby. February Lowry. It was <laughs> uh, February Lowry. Lowry. February Lowry, man, just after that time. But that's why I'm saying this, this kind. Of, that's how they're kind of looking at these things. You're looking at the guys who have been drafted and what they could be and what they might be. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, on paper this looks nice, but you got to play. And you got to win and you got to pay some dividends before you can get on these kind of, in my opinion. And that's uh, why okay. when I say like the cupboard wasn't bare, I think it's probably somewhere right in between what you guys are saying. Like they had some nice young pro prospects, but at the end of the day, like it's a zero sum game. They have to win and they haven't won. It's the same with the injuries. Like all we have right now is another season being bounced in the first round at like as the best season you've had in five years. So like they need to improve. Yeah, well, true indeed. And, I mean, to, to use your phrase there of the cover, cupboard wasn't bare, and to use a phrase that Big Dave loves to say about Acme all the time, let them cook. Let them. They came into a new kitchen, looked in the cupboard, and were like, <laughs> we don't like any of these ingredients. Get me a new fucking kitchen. <laughs> Home makeover style. I think they did I think it. we can all agree on that one. They, 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 on kept, that one. they kept Zach Levine, the one big thing of salt, in that one kitchen <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> And got all new kitchen cabinets. Because salt makes everything taste better. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I got you. Hashtag I Levine Cuisine. Um, okay. Uh, with the remainder of the time we got left today, we're going to play this new game Joey invented called Quotable. But before we do that, Big Dave is going to tell us about Owen and how you should be using it for you your self-improvement. Yes, you do that. All of that. Because it is something that you will love. It's a 100% plant-based protein shake. Gives you that nutrition that works as hard as you do. And you work hard, so you deserve something like this. Free of artificial ingredients, allergen-friendly, no gluten or dairy, and easy on the tummy tum tum, y'all. It mm. is easily digestible. And you know who else gets down with this? You know who else loves that? How about that quarterback that went 14 to 16 and tossed out three touchdowns in the first half in the preseason game? I'm talking about QB1, Justin Fields. That's who's down with the O-win. He understands it's only what you need. So Owen and CHGL partnered up to give you this awesome offer here, y'all. 20% off your first purchase at liveowen.com. Just go to liveowen.com, use the code CHGO20, and you will get yourself 20% off your first purchase. So join Justin Fields, who's going to be awesome. Join all of us here at CHGO. And why don't you also join Owen and enjoying some of this awesome goodness because it is only what you need. Because as you always know, a wins, Joey. A win. Mm. <laughs> Clap that up. I'm proud of him. A win. He's an awesome guy. Just like CSO softball last time. Come night. on, baby. Hey Joey, show him the photo, Joey. <laughs> I, I got to pull it? it up now. I okay. got to pull it up. All right, you're going to pull it up. We got something special for you, Matt. Oh, God. Something man. special for you, man. I'm afraid. No, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> this, is, this is good stuff. This is good stuff, man. This is the, something that you want to see, that Will is going to want to see, too. You know what I'm saying? Because I yeah. think he, he deserves a, a part mm. of this also because he was out While there. While Joey's looking for whatever it is, I just saw the, that pop up. Did you see the CSGO Blackhawks guys got to go paint the United Center how awesome ice is that? today? Like, how awesome is that, man? So cool. That is just on a level that nobody's on right now. You Painting know what I'm saying? Painting the Blackhawks logo to get on to the floor at the Madhouse. Dude, that had to be like a freakout moment. So You jolly. know what I'm saying? That had to be a freakout moment for them, man. Like, that's just really... Really cool. I hope we get to do something like that. Yeah. One day with the Bulls, man. Like, let us on the court. Hey guys, you want to there, there it is there for you, sir. Oh. The game ball. There it is. Look That's, at that, it. The game ball is for the team. That's yes, not, it is. I mean. Team game ball, sir. Team game ball. It'll be here. We got to mount it somewhere on one of these sets behind yes, us. Yes, Our Our C, first ever CHGO softball playoff victory. I'm so proud of y'all, man. First of many. First of many. First of many. And you played a big part in that, Matthew Peck. Hey, man. You played a big role in that. Sacrificed yourself. I did. You did that, man. Made it around the base path four times. Four times. Scored four runs. That's right. Never got out at the plate. Atkins died. Three for three and a walk. That's right. Hit them with it, baby. I'm so proud of y'all, man. I mean, I'm, I'm no Joey, but 
Yeah. I do what I can to help my team. And you did, and everybody clicked mm-hmm. at the right time. That's what good teams do, aren't they? Ain't that right, Will? They they peak and they click at the at the right this time. This is the kind of enthusiasm we were looking for at the start of the show, and I'm glad we finally <laughs> we finally got there. I told him to give me five minutes. <laughs> yeah, you needed to you need to soak it in for a second. I get it. I get it. Yeah, just had to get there, man. Once once he explained it to me, I understood the underdog story more. Like once it, as it went on in the movie, I, I was the skeptic in a field of dreams. Yeah, that's what so I was. I was. It was like you know to use like uh, March Madness uh, comparison. We were just now last night an eleven seed that upset whatever like a five or six seed. Yeah. yeah. A week from Monday, we're going up against the undefeated one seed. Undefeated dogs in the right second there. round of the playoffs. Yeah, man. Hey, man. I, I, Underdogs. All right. Underdogs. All right. Matt loves it. He's going to be doing some push-ups. Best of luck to you. Yes, absolutely. You're not flying in, Will? No? Just ask me. I mean, hey, if, uh, if Brandon wants to put me first class on a flight back, I'll <laughs> Why happily. Why first class? I'll let you do the first class in there. All That's right. the goal, I'm not baby. coming Let's... back just for fun. <laughs> Let's play this new game called Quotable and see how it goes. This could be a recurring segment, guys. Uh, yes, sir. Joey, basically, do uh, you want to give us a quick rundown of the rules? Yes, so bear with me. I have zero idea if this is going to be fun. We'll see. I, I'm confident it will, but whatever. Um, I yeah, so I believe the first, too. we have a couple different types. So the first type is I'm going to put up a quote, uh-huh. and you have to figure out who said the quote. Okay. They're all Bulls related. And then we also have the Pictionary type uh, word unscramble, which are also Bulls sayings and quotes. And you have to guess what the saying is, and then extra points if you can guess who said it. But Love it. Okay. So you, we right. can do it like you guys can work together. You guys can, you know, we can try and, you know, figure it out mm-hmm. almost in a race. I'm going to cover up the chat for the most part, but okay. let's yeah. just give it a try and we'll see. All right. Let's, so, let's see what we got here, man. Let's see what's um, going on with that young man, Joey. I hope it's no math. It's no math. No math. All right. All right. All right. The basketball version, version of, of a, a grave, grave digger. digger. Okay. That sounds vaguely familiar. Um, oh, and I, I have a laptop in my lap, but I'm, I, pro- I yeah, will not Yeah, we're not going to use it, yes. I we're will not, not cheat. We're not, we're not cheating. Yes. Uh, Scout's honor. We're not why cheating. does that sound like Chris Dunn to me? Oh, uh, that's a good, really good guess. That actually. is a really good guess. Yeah. I wonder it's, how it's, recent this is. Do we have a time frame? On we this? have no time we frame. No time frame. I'm going to go with Matt. I, I think Matt's right. That, that does sound that like just, Chris That Dunn has Chris say. Dunn written all over it. It, it is not Chris it. Dunn. It's not Chris it's Dunn. It's not Chris Dunn, not Chris says Dunn. Joey. All right. That's not Chris Dunn. What it's you think, It's not the Will? bald-headed menace, is it? He is, okay. No, no. 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 He's, a player. He's a player. He's a player. Go- He's a good player. He's a little bit above uh, the Chris Dunn tier. A little bit above Chris Dunn. He's significantly so above the Chris Dunn tier. Significantly. it's not Denzel. No, it's not. It's not. Um, See, I'm actually surprised. I think this is, I thought this would have been Lou an easier Dang? one for you. No, not Lou Dang. Um, I mean, what he's saying, like who embodies this, you know? All right, you want, me to, Noah? you want me to give this one to you and we could we could see, you know, like what I'm thinking here a little bit? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Give, give us one more hand. Oh! Yeah, okay. What, yeah, man? See, see, I'm a little I, surprised there because mm. I felt like that was sort of a personality, like, you know. Dennis. We I, I, I know a lot of Dennis quotes yeah. off the top of my head. Literally I, a Dennis I am shirt. wearing a Dennis Rodman shirt right now. <laughs> that, that one picture is amazing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great Fantastic. picture. Fantastic. Yeah. Are his eyes closed? I, you know what? Is he meditating? They are. You know, with Dennis, it could be a, a multitude of things. Right. <laughs> like, we don't know. Has, has he made it to Russia yet to I, rescue Brittany? He said he was going in a week or two. He so, did. So we'll see if he makes that trip. <laughs> see that All right. Let's do, an, let's do an easy one here. Okay. Right, here we go. Right. Hook us up, man. Hook us up. Basketball vision of, version of a grave digger. Oh, that's the same one. Okay. Dennis, Dennis Rodman. Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we got next? Everybody's, Everybody's got their point. poison and yeah. mine is sugar. That's Derek. Derek, that's Derek, Derek Rose. Rose. That is Derek yeah, Rose. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Derek. That's, yeah. that's an easy Mister, one. I got that's a Skittles, Skittles machine in my house. Skittles. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Let's what try another next? one here. It hurts mm-hmm. when you have so many beautiful girls out there telling you you're ugly. Joe Keem! Yeah, that's Joe Kim. That is Joe Boom. Keem. I believe that was a quote about his time at Florida yep. uh, when he was such a national, like a huge star. Okay, mm-hmm. so now I'm going to throw in the one of our... handsome man on the planet. We'll throw in one of our, <laughs> our picture uh, puzzles here. So, okay. Ooh, a picture puzzle. Picture puzzle. So this All is right. like the stuff that's on the underside of a cap on like a bottle of Pabst. 
Bo- Wait, you that's know, on a bottle of Paps? Yeah. I mean, I don't know the last time you had a sixer of Paps Blue Ribbon in bottles, but at the bar, the, the only times. fun thing about drinking Paps Blue Ribbon uh-huh. in a bottle is the underside of the bottle cap have these little picture puzzles Listen, on it. I'm drinking a lot out of the bottle, and I've never noticed it. Yeah, not man. One time, man. I mean, who actually ever looks at the underside of a bottle cap? I, I, I definitely not. I'm more noticed it on like beverages. Okay, you know so saying? that's a that's a beer. tape race bicep thumb. <laughs> Uh, what measure distance strong. is the two included in it? Good, it's, everything's there for a reason. And two. this is a, you're saying this is a quote, it's a saying, well, it's a, a quote, quote or yes. saying, it's a quote or to saying. Tape. Oh, too big, too strong, too, too fast, fast, too, too good. good. Boom, too big, nice, too Ooh. fast, too strong, too good. Ah, if, if I may nitpick, Joey, please, because we respect Stacey King and all the Stacey King's isms um. on here. CHGO Bulls. It's too big, too strong, too fast, too good. Mm-hmm. You flip the strong and the fast. Shh. Flippity floppity. That's what he said. Okay, uh, we'll go a couple more here. Accuracy is important. You y'all. switch the samples. You switch the I just want my family back. <laughs> uh, mm. hand, give me the hot sauce. Oh, yes. Give me the hot sauce. All yes, right. Okay. So, okay. so they're I'm getting just, a little, we're a little, there's these, we're a little bit easy those here. Are but good. Also, the sauce looks a little like blood splatter, and I'm a little it does look a little bloody. That. I thought yeah, it was it blood. Little, That's why yes. I was slow. <laughs> yes. Will is, yes. Give me the flaming <laughs> blood. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I've got a couple that, that more. All right, got we a couple got another one? Fun ones. I like this We'll see here. We'll see if you guys can get this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's bring this up. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. I'm doing all right. Doing okay. Uh, trash Britain all exclamation. This mm. one's tough. Flush, flush Britain, flush England all uh, hazard. Uh, so it's not flush. Toilet? Toilet, but what is the British flag on there for? Oh, Lou. Lou all dang. Lou. Lou all dangerous dang. Lou all dangerous. Wow. Joey. Ah. Well done. Ah, so yes. Matthew. It's a British toilet, so it's a Lou. Yeah. It's okay. a Lou. Got Very you. Nice. That one took, well done. took a second. Great yeah, job. Once, once you gave us the clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As he threw that, it was good. It was good. Uh, <laughs> I like this quote. What up, Brandon? <laughs> uh, size doesn't, size make doesn't make any difference. Up, up, up. I gave oh, it away. Oh, you gave us. I you gave it away. Jerry Sloan. Sloan. Jerry Sloan. It was Jerry Sloan. Well, I got that one. All right. Good job. I'll take that. Kirk Thank you. Dude, you got to give us time to guess. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes Will. He was on point. What's up, Steve? What up, Steve? We, we have any more before we wrap up, Joey? No, I'm you never happy. happy. I'm not I'm happy, happy unless, unless I'm tips. Tips. I have heard that. Tips. That's tips. Oh, yeah, Will. Uh, Will was on it. Such a fitting picture for that quote, yes, too. Yes, Oh, my God. You can't tell me that. identify with that. The double-fisted really guttural. Yes. The great thing about Tibbs is when you see those photos, you don't know if it's good or bad. You have no idea. He, he looks the same whether he's happy or whether he's angry. The same. <laughs> All right. Let's do one or two more. Okay. And we'll see if these are good or not. All right. Okay? Let's I don't know. These are a little bit out there. Picture or quote? These are a little bit out there. Picture. Get Will out of here. Thank you. Foot. Backwards and lettuce. Lettuce us? Lettuce twice? No, see, that's a minus sign. Let me step back and kiss myself. Boom. Wow. <laughs> step back oh. and let me kiss myself. <laughs> right there. Well done. See, we've lettuce, oh. my, meat, minus meat. the A-T. Okay. Kiss myself. Wow. That, that was a nice one, Dave. Thank yeah, you Dave, much. I'm that really impressed. Well, that's because he there. put food up there. That, you know. That was, food, I was, that like, was yeah. a, see, can we just I didn't. I didn't see that, that, that I didn't see those yeah, as I minus too, signs. Man. I saw them as dashes. Okay. That's why I thought it was let, lettuce lettuce. Say, say it again. <laughs> say it again. Will. I was going to say, I believe the first time we heard that one was when Derek hit the step back game winner against the Bucks, And that yes. was just one of my. Yeah, the, exactly. the double chest pound. Yeah. In a, an incredible moment, man. Ch- the, one wow, of the longest double tap. two yep. pointers ever. Yeah. It was like he was half. He wasn't even a half a step. He was like a quarter step in front of the three point line on that step true back. Indeed. True indeed. He was. Mm. Okay, what a time. we'll go one more. One last, more. Last one. Last one. Here we go. Windy, Windy City, City Assassin. Assassin. Wow. Come on with Big it, baby. Dave. Come Dave on with us. it. Uh, Thank you, you got to just give me some more Tibbs ones, and I'll get them. <laughs> I mean, I think I've, that looked a little bit more like Windy City Ninja to me. I'm oh. just going <laughs> to split hairs, but. 
We'll have to do a couple oh, harder man. ones next time. Here, here's one more. One more because Dave got it so more? fast. This one's okay. easy. Onions, baby, onions. Yes, the sir. Wow. Chuck, Spursky, baby. Chuck. Onions, Get baby, shout onions. Out. Okay, oh. so if we play quotable again, maybe we'll make them a little bit harder. Okay. Okay. But, yeah. Those are, you know. those are hard enough for me. I, 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 and I like, <laughs> I like it as quotes and guessing the person who said it, and I like the pictures and figure out what the quote is yeah, or saying it. Yeah. I thought, I both, both, I thought both worked. Yeah, I thought yes, both man. worked. Let it, be, let it be known, Law. I was not reaching, all right? You did a great job, man. You did a Thank great you. job. Thank you. Um, that's it. That's it for quotable. All that's right. it for quotable, and that's it for today's show. Boom. Uh, not bad for thinking we had a guest today and then not having a guest. Well, this we is improvise. Why we are who we this are, is so. what we do. Yes. Uh, we'll be back live with another show. Dave and I will be in studio again tomorrow. Uh, we're going to talk best case and worst case scenario for the Bulls this upcoming season. What needs to go right for them to reach their apex in 22-23 mm -hmm. and what might go wrong for them to take a step back. We'll talk about that and any other big NBA headlines from tonight and tomorrow morning on tomorrow's show. In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter. Won't Gottlieb. Bow, B-A-W-L Sports, Bow. Bulls underscore Peck. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. Give that CHGO underscore Bulls Twitter account a follow if you haven't already. Um, shout out and thanks to our guy Joey today for not only producing, but coming up with a new segment. Shout out to Joey. Quota Bulls. Uh, and as I mentioned before, go back and give a rewatch to CHGO Bears today. They're talking about the 53-man roster. Yeah. And revealing a brand new CHGO Bears shirt yes, in that do. CHGO merch locker. You won, baby. Boom! Get it some. For Joey, for Big Dave, for Matt, everybody here at CHGO. We got more on deck for you. CHGO bets at 430, and then probably some baseball after that. What's wrong with that? C-Red be good. <laughs>